Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint an impressionist uh, flower, floral <laughs> vase. <laughs> it's going to be uh, kind of a white background with a kind of a white ceramic uh, vase, and we're going to keep the flowers very simple uh, to make it beginner friendly. I'll be showing you step by step how to do it all the way through from start to finish. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man and chat for our live show. So if you've got questions, you can post those while I'm painting and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. All right, so this is my reference image. I had a, the reference image that you saw in the beginning there that had all three paintings or all three uh, bouquets. Um, and... Uh, this is the center one. So last week we did this one, which was the one off to the far side, and we're going to be doing another one. I don't know why I did them on such big canvases, because you're not going to be able to see all three. This is about as far back as my camera can uh, process. So uh, we'll, we'll just kind of pretend like we can see all three once we get the third one finished. Um, but they're going to be able to be set side by side if you want to, or you can kind of hang them separately or do one and not the other who whatever you want to do but we're going to be doing three um this is a 12 by 12 inch uh, pro series plein air paint board mixed media by frederick so they provided our canvas for today we thank them for this these are the kind of eco-friendly they're uh hard board all the way through very firm um, and they have kind of a low tack, uh, and they're all ready, gessoed, and ready to go, so we don't have to do anything to them to get them ready. Uh, what I did to start with is I just kind of lined up this line here and made a mark all the way across with a water-soluble pencil to mark where my line was going to go. Let's go over our paint colors really quick. Got unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium yellow, medium cadmium, or I'm sorry, yellow oxide, uh, thalo green blue shade, ultramarine blue, dioxazine purple, burnt umber, and burnt sienna. So close. I know. <laughs> Almost You're out of practice. I am out of practice. Can't we just give got you, back. We had Saturday can't off. Can't so give you a day nice. off. We did. We did. A little rusty. We'll get back in it today just take a minute <laughs> um got a few brushes here i'll go over that i'm going to be using this is the number 12 bright number eight bright uh number four round and number four filbert these are the princeton brushes that they've provided for our, our videos uh they're our brush sponsor and we absolutely love their brushes this is a 6100 series they do have longer handles um and this one um is the velvet touch series and there are these, this is the quarter inch and three eighths inch angle. And then we've got the select series, all Princeton here, you know, number one liner and 10 aught bristle fan brush. So this is just for our splattering here. Okay, we got a question. Yes. What does it mean by low tack? Where are they seeing that? I think you mentioned it in your discussion about the canvas about the canvas oh low tack oh i just it's not it's low texture low that's texture what, yeah, that's what okay. I meant. yeah like low texture oh so like you're throwing out some jargon yeah it's just got go. it doesn't have a real heavy um the there there is like a canvas texture but it's very smooth it's almost like a linen so um most canvases come a little bit rougher they'll have a little bit more of a texture so Sorry, I shouldn't have said tack. Tack's probably more tackiness than, te than texture. Okay. I, uh, I said that you could use it for sailing. So <laughs> it's one of the few sailing terms I know. Right. All right. Okay. I'm going to grab a little bit of water on my brush here. I'm going to start out with the number 12 bright. And we're just going to put in this background. I did kind of draw out my vase. So we'll go ahead and go over that. Um, I'm trying to think if I really want to paint around it or not I guess I will since I've already got it drawn on there I don't really know why I drew it ahead of time I just did earlier today we had no air conditioning when we came back from vacation so I was in my studio <laughs> trying to stay away from the electrician working on <laughs> <It's> hiding <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so about, I kind of measured here, it was about, if you take this bottom line here that we did off of the other canvas, it's, uh, okay, so the, this is the halfway mark, this is the quarter, let's see, it's, it's not quite a, an eighth, but almost an eighth of the way down here. So if this is the halfway mark, this is the quarter mark. It's almost split in between here. So it's almost about an eighth of the way down the, the square canvas. And you can size up or down however you want to. But we're coming just below the um, horizon line or whatever the, the line there. And we're going to make a mark here and here. And that is about five widths on this bottom. So if you measured here, 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 and here, you should have five little sections. This one will be right in the middle here. And then it goes to about the halfway mark. So right smack dab in the middle of your canvas, this is going to be kind of the top of your um, picture. And then we're just going to kind of come in and back out like that on this side. And same deal this side. I'm going to come out a little bit more for the spout like that. And then the bottom is just about flat. It's a little tiny, tiny bit curved. Like that. We've got a really straight on angle just about, so we're not really seeing much of a curve. And then our handle is over here, but I'm actually going to paint over that area. We'll draw it in later. And the top of it is right in here. That's straight across. All right, so let's get started with our paint. We're going to start, grab a little bit of water and grab some of our unbleached titanium right from the side, kind of pull it off to a little clean spot where I can add, I'm picking up a little bit more water here on my brush, just dipping it in and wiping it in. So the uh, heavy body acrylics are pretty thick. So you need to add just a little bit of water to get them to kind of move smoothly on your canvas. You can also spray your canvas with a little bit of water. Ooh, I just dropped my pencil in the paint there. <laughs> Don't do that. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of unbleached or uh, ultramarine blue and burnt umber to make a darker kind of gray color. A little bit of white. And we're just going to slap all of that on here on the background. This background area here behind the flowers, if you remember on this canvas, was a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to kind of use this to look and see, try to get about the same value going and if you want to if you know you're going to do all three canvases you could do uh, these backgrounds all at one time and that'll probably make sure that you get them all exactly the same you can do all three of the backgrounds and foreground um, sections first and then you can add because they're all going to be the same all three of these that's about similar A little bit of water. Each time you pick up more paint, you're going to want to grab a little bit more water, and that'll just keep your brush hydrated. If you don't do that, your brush can become kind of dry, and what it'll do is just hold on to that paint. The paint will stick to the brush, and it won't flow off onto the canvas, and then you'll end up grabbing more paint because it's not coming off your brush. And like, why is this not working? And uh, you'll just keep adding more and more paint to your canvas or to your brush, and it will continue to get stickier, and it won't... Um, It'll start to dry quickly, it won't blend really well together, so water is really the key with this kind of thing. You just want to make sure that you're adding water to your brush every now and then, every time you're kind of picking up new paint. That keeps it flowing well, keeps that brush hydrated so that it, the water or the paint can just kind of flow right off onto the canvas. And that's why we use a lot of water when we do lining, lining because you need a lot of, picked up a little bit more water again. Ooh, are we going to get Is rain? That thunder? Yeah, that's thunder. Oh, wow. I didn't know it was going to rain tonight. Maybe we can beat the rain, we'll see. Okay, picking up a little bit more. I'm just going to go over the top of that handle, go right up to the edge. You'll notice with this water water soluble pencils, it they will kind of turn dark. You can see where it's kind of blending with the paint. That's fine. I can kind of pull in towards the handle a little bit, and I'm just kind of doing little cross stroke 
X, 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 X back and forth like this to get a little bit of texture in our background. It's not like a smooth blend. We want kind of some activity going on, a little bit of motion back there. So just have fun with it. You can kind of slap out your aggressions onto the canvas instead of slapping your husband. <laughs> that canvas get it out there Didn't take out the trash again I told him <laughs> how many times <laughs> what I took the trash out this morning <laughs> just saying I'm, I'm oh, you're giving practicing? an example I'm, yeah okay. I'm not angry with you all, all right. right all right good just saying if you were you could do it that way <laughs> so hello to everybody who's joining us tonight yeah Thanks for stopping in on this Tuesday evening. Glad to have you here with us. Hope and you uh, have a good weekend. Yeah. If it's your first time, you've just stumbled upon the channel, welcome. And uh, think about hitting that subscribe button and checking out Angela's channel. She's got th three or four videos, right? Just a few. Couple. Just a few. A couple hundred. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think we should be about 300 by the end of the year. Something like that. Oh, okay. Well, pick up the pace a little bit. <laughs> you can go a little faster. Anyways, we're here live Tuesday, most almost every Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Central Time and uh, Saturdays. Up a little bit of more water. I'm using the darker. Sorry, I'm just I changed colors here and I did tell them what we're doing. Oh, that's fine. Um, using the darker color here, the unbleached titanium. I'm sorry. The yeah, there's a little bit of unbleached titanium. Uh, burnt Umber and quen uh, Ultramarine Blue for this gray. And so I'm just using kind of a darker version of the color that I was using up here. I added a lot more white too. And you can use that edge of your brush to kind of go across. If you also, if you want to make sure that you get it nice and straight, you can also use a ruler and set it down on, you know, make sure that this part's dry and just set the ruler right down onto the canvas. You can paint right along the edge of the ruler, and it'll keep your paint straight, too. Oh. Okay, sorry. Okay. I can't. The only bad thing about these is there's no place to grab them. <laughs> They're kind of just floating on the edge here. I can't grab the inside of them where they're stapled on the back on a, like a regular canvas has a little hole there that I can stick my hand in and kind of hold on to it. This is just kind of sliding around on me. But, okay, so that was it. Go ahead. You can keep talking there. And oh, I was just saying that, you know, and on Saturdays at 2 p.m. Central Time, we get out there. Tuesday nights we try to do something a little bit easier right not so long because right. usually um coming home from work and hangry i mean hungry hangry and uh <laughs> <laughs> get it done plus you know usually it's a work night for most people and school nights during the winter time so anyway did i just touch my camera? yeah you hit it but that's all right and then saturday is a little bit deeper i'm right, just doing the sides here real quick mm -hmm. Yeah, Saturdays we sometimes do a little bit more, you know, maybe closer to two-hour paintings, depending on what we've been doing that week. We've got some really fun ones coming up. I'm really excited about it. We're going to be doing a girl walking in a field in a couple weeks. Uh, With a tank rolling by in the background? Exactly. Yeah, no. No? Not. Oh, okay. Not... <laughs> but you guess you put one in there if you really wanted to. Anything from CSGO? No. Anything that? No? Okay. I know. It's surprisingly, my CSGO pictures, you know, did, just didn't get a lot of likes on th Instagram. I can't really believe weird. it. I can't believe it. That's your main, my art your main following. <laughs> I know. My art friends were, they're not that impressed by the CSGO what is it? Counter strike, strike global something or other. What is this go part? Global, global offensive, I think. Offensive. Yeah, we went to Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. I went to the 
Turner Studios. Yeah, Turner Studios tournament of the video game. It's actually pretty interesting. Honestly, I was more I was surprised that I was it was as interesting as it was. So it was fun seeing the behind the scenes way they do. It's pretty pretty much like a regular TV show. Okay, so I got paint on that somehow. I must have just done that. When did I do that? Okay, get that off there. Um, so that's a lot lighter. So I need to go back in here and get a little bit more brown, a little bit more of this. Kind of go over that a little bit. Get a little bit, like, try to get it similar color. I'm gonna let you take that and dry it there, honey. Right. If you want to. I'm just gonna use just regular hair dryer. And when you're doing your hair dryer, um, if you want to uh, make sure that you're not holding it in one place, you know, kind of like your hair, if you think about it, you're not gonna get it too close to your head. You're not going to um, hold it in one place and melt that paint down. <laughs> it can actually kind of bubble it up. Um, so just keep it moving back back and forth about, I don't know, eight inches or so from the canvas um, and uh, use kind of a medium heat, not a super high heat. Um, if you've got a cool blast, you can use that on there too to kind of cool it down before you start painting on it again. Um, that helps. So um, sorry, this is really exciting here. I'm just gonna clean off my hands real quick. So I don't get it on my canvas where I don't want it to be. Let's do a little quick flowers on our little stick man guy here. We've got stick man from, let's zoom in here. He's, he's been going a while here. He's had several mutations so far this year. I think this is pretty much from the beginning of the year. So we'll give, this is our picture from last week. We'll give him some flowers coming out of it now. Maybe give them some green. Get some of this quinacridone magenta here and some pink going on. Put in some flowers. Oops. Okay, he's already here. There we go. There's Stickman. He's come. he's almost nice. pretty much full. We need to do a it's new one. It's blurry. Come on. Yeah, we're gonna need a new one pretty soon there, hun. If you can handle that. <laughs> Zoom out. Okay, I'll have to take a few days off and <laughs> go up into the mountains, get focused. Get focused, get it, yeah. yeah. Get in the right headspace. Yeah, get it. in the right mind frame, frame of mind, I mean. <laughs> See, I, already I'm, I can't handle it. It's just too You're stressful just right now. thinking about it. Uh -huh. I'll have to watch my video again. Watch your video. Yeah. Get, Mark does Try have a remember. video on my channel if you want to see it. Surprising, it doesn't have very many views. I thought it would be one of my more popular ones because it's it's pretty hilarious if you do ask me. <coughs> <coughs> Almost got it all the way off. Sorry, <laughs> that was came, that one came up pretty quick there. Not a lot of warning. All right, I am putting up more white here. Close that up. Let me. Getting the number eight bright now. I'm just going to kind of clean out this bigger brush real quick. I'm not getting very good water shots today. Uh oh, oh, I just got oh. <laughs> a drop of water on there. <laughs> Obviously, it wasn't dry all the way. That's what happens when it's not completely cured. That'll happen to your okay, mix so up some more gray here. We'll turn that into a marble or something. Oh, it'll be fine. No biggie. So if that happens, just grab, you know, just mix some more of your background color on there and just slap it on. I really needed to make that a little bit lighter anyways, so it works out fine. I'm gonna leave a little bit of darkness around this bottom of this vase but I'm going to go ahead and put in and if it's not covering like that just grab a little bit more water just means that it's kind of dry 
So let's see, a little bit of water will help it smooth on there. There we go. No problem. Nice thing about acrylics is they're pretty easy to fix. They um, layer really well and you can layer them quickly with oil paints if you, um, you know, you have to wait uh, in between layers often unless you're doing like a wet on wet painting like Bob Ross style but if you're doing kind of glazing that kind of thing you have to make sure that it dries and sometimes it takes weeks for your layers to dry in between so that's one of the reasons why I like to paint with acrylics because you don't have to wait I'm not patient enough for that get the hair dryer blow dry it quickly and move on so I've got white here I'm going to just go ahead and start filling in my picture A little bit of water, a little bit of paint. Work that water into the paint. It also, it not only does it work the water into your paint, but it also works it into your brush. I'm really pushing down nice and hard so that that brush is getting that paint soaking all the way through it. Um, that will make make it so that I won't have to reload it as often. And then I'm just kind of smoothing it out once I kind of get the paint down on the canvas there smoothing out any like little ridges that form while I'm painting them on so that those will dry hard so you have those kind of little ridges in your paint as you're as you see them just kind of lightly go over them so that they don't dry that way because that will make it a lot harder for the upper layers to look smooth now some people like a lot of texture on their paintings and if you do you know that's good that's a totally you know valid technique to go for it but the the way we're painting here um, we're kind of smoothing it out a little bit as we go just using the edge of my brush to kind of get us a mouth nice blend there or nice edge Then, while that paint's wet, so I've covered the whole thing with the paint, I'm going to grab some ultramarine blue and some of that gray that I had in here before that's this color down here. So this is a little bit more on the blue side, and I'm just going to pull through that wet paint and create some shadowing up here. Most of this top edge is covered with greenery so I'm not really too worried about it being super clean I can kind of pull through if my paint is drying down here it'll be sticky so if it's starting to do that you can just kind of stop and let it dry all the way before you do this but if you kind of get it on there pretty quickly you can do this um, if it's not if it's dry you can just dry brush this part so it's it's fine just let it dry all the way so if it's if it's sticky let the white dry get the hair dryer out blow dry it and then do this over the top. Um, you can add a little bit of white in one little section and then kind of add the blue over the top if you want it to blend a little bit. And I'm just, or you can just kind of dry brush it, flick it on there. Getting a little bit more brown. I'm gonna do a little bit darker right here. Ooh, a little far out there. There we go. So I'm setting it down where I want it to be and then kind of flicking it up and that'll create this broken line at the top so it gives it um, kind of this soft blended look without having to actually blend the paint it sort of does the work the brush will do the work for you I'm gonna do a little bit dark right here Right down through. Okay. And 
and we'll go along the edge here. Go a little bit dark right along that edge. There was like a shadow right there. We'll grab a little bit of the white, kind of come up over the top to blend it in a little bit. Okay, that's good. Maybe do a little bit darker there. Okay. I'm going to switch to, I'm going to go ahead and switch to this brush. This is the number 3 8 inch angle brush. We'll do the handle. And I can kind of still see it through my paint there, so what are you doing? I'm going to set up. Oh, thank you. I'll apply it like so they don't know. Okay. I'm going to grab my paint there. I'm going to water for me. So I'm going to do from, so if you, this is halfway, so I'm going to go kind of a quarter of the way to the bottom, angle that out and curve it back in. use a round brush whatever brush you're comfortable with using in this space that's the best brush to use so it really doesn't have to be this exact brush that I'm using just whatever you're comfortable with I'm gonna make a dark blue with the burnt umber and the quinacridone or uh, uh, ultramarine I'm having trouble saying my names today well, if you just use my method, it'd be all better. Blue, mm -hmm. another blue. Right, I should just say blue. Yellow, reddish, red. Reddish red. <laughs> okay, so that handle is kind of blue. I'm going to go even darker. Ultramarine. Burnt umber, a little bit of burnt umber. The burnt umber just darkens it up. I'm going to go ahead and put in a section through here that's really dark. It's going over the top of that light color though, so it's kind of lightening it up a little bit. I'm going to clean that off. And then we grab some of the burnt umber, a little bit of the Sienna. And I'm going to make these kind of rusty patches in my thing. So, picture here. And just tapping in with the tip of the brush to create our kind of little spots there. There's some like right around the handle where it attaches. Some down below where it's kind of touching the bottom of the whatever this is it's sitting on table table thank you that's the word I'm looking for <laughs> I have a real hard time with my words today I'm just going to have to like point to you and you'll just have to say the word for me paint <laughs> brush mm. hey uh, somebody asked they're they're wanting to learn more about blending so okay. do you have a specific video that really would i do have a blending video i have a blend a video that's just about blending with acrylics it shows three different kinds of paint it shows your heavy body acrylics your regular craft acrylics and your kind of student body quality oh, acrylics right. or soft yeah. medium body it's that blue and it one, shows right? how to bl all kinds of different techniques for how to blend it's with the three different blue paints three different right? blue paints okay. uh-huh and that. You just yeah um, if you go to my, uh, you just look for Angela Anderson blending techniques, and I think, you know, just search for that and you should pop it up. Um, yeah, it's a good basic, you know, okay. just how to blend with acrylics. It's actually probably something that I would say you would, I really should mention it more often because it's probably one of the better 
paintings or you know tutorials that I have for a you know first time painter to learn how to blend. Okay, so I'm just tapping over with some white paint to kind of blend it in a little bit, and there's kind of a heavy shadow right there, so I'm going to grab some of that dark paint there, and just sort of come up from the handle a little bit right there. There's some white. Grab some white on the tip, pure white this time. I'm just gonna dab through just some highlights in that vase there. Kind of streaks down through that dark paint. Create some highlights like that. It'll make it look a little shinier. And you can also kind of blend out any of these streaks that might have gotten a little too big or, you know, not in the right area or whatever. And I think we're good. And then maybe a little highlight on that handle. Most of this handle is covered up by that tag in the picture so it's kind of hard to tell what the handle looks like but we're going to kind of put some greenery around it and hope for the best so <laughs> all right <laughs> let's draw in our flowers so our flowers are going to go right in this area this whole top area um, is going to be filled with the flowers we've got one big one right in here it'll be kind of our I'm just going to draw in the major um major ones and then the rest of it around it is going to be kind of greenery so we're going to have some greenery coming down over the over the vase right here over it right here out this side greens we've got some smaller flowers kind of looks like daisies over here there's a really big blossom right there it's kind of a spiked flower right here, a cone shape, big old circle there, a little one here, another big one here kind of overlapped, and then a couple smaller ones here and here with another big cone shaped, cone shaped, smaller blossom, and then there's There. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay. All right. So I'm going to grab the filbert, number four filbert. And I'm using the um, phthalo green blue shade, but if you don't have blue shade, you have green shade. Just add a little bit of phthalo blue to it um, to make it a little bit more of this kind of softer um, or more bluish green. I'm going to add some yellow oxide. And some burnt umber. Darken it up. And I'm just going to kind of go in around my flowers. Put some dark area in this middle area where I want some really dark shadows to happen around my flowers. And I'm gonna actually grab a little bit of purple too and do some areas with purple. This purple is just about the darkest color that you can get besides black. So it's a way to really darken up your colors without using black. Works really well. Okay, I'm gonna do a few. Had a painting question, but unrelated directly to this video. Okay. What is your opinion about acrylic paper? I don't like it myself. It's just my pre preference. I, d I think it's kind of slick. If I'm painting on paper, I prefer to use the Swarthmore paper. 
it's the mixed media. Looks like this. It's got a hard core in the paper. Um, you need more water when you're painting on paper. Um, so it's not going to act like canvas. You're going to definitely need to add more water, but it's nice and thick. Um, you want a mixed media paper or a water media paper of some sort. Watercolor paper works well too for painting on uh, with acrylics, but uh, definitely not regular paper, like, you know, notebook paper or, um, I don't know, uh, you know, other notebooks. It's got to be a heavyweight paper to handle acrylics. The water will just eat up that paper. It'll make it really difficult to work with. So, all right, I'm adding a little bit of white and a little bit of the more yellow oxide. Bill of green. I'm going to press that brush flat if I can get it flat there. I'm going to do a couple of these big leaves that are coming down here. And the last video I showed a couple of techniques for doing kind of a leaf stroke. So if you want to kind of do kind of a stylized leaf, you could do that here. Of gonna lay out some leaf shapes coming out, and I'm doing a little bit lighter so that you know there's a little bit of contrast between what I've already done. I'm gonna just dab in some just by pressing down and lifting. This filbert has a kind of a leaf shape already to it, so we get really pretty shapes happening just by pressing down and lifting my brush. I don't have to do a whole lot of work to it to get a nice leaf shape. I'm going to go ahead and make one of these a big leaf. Looking at the outsides now, I'm using this kind of lighter color on the outsides. I use that darker color kind of in the middle here, and now I'm just kind of using this to sort of build out some leaf shapes out here where I know they're going to be on the border of the painting. Let's put a big one right here. that down and get a good leaf. All right, get some of that darker color. You can maybe use that just to do a couple smaller ones. Put some of that darker color on some of this. Give it some shadow. Pressing it through the wet paint there to kind of give it a little shadow on one side. Okay. Ready for a sales pitch? Yes. We had a question about recommended brushes. Okay. So for like a starter kit, what would be a few brushes that uh, people well, should get? Definitely a large flat, so bright. A lot of times, if you're if you're not painting on heavy, like really large canvases, uh, or if you're painting on, um, if you're not doing a lot of detail with your really large brush, you can get away with using like a large uh, foam brush instead of buying one of these really expensive ones, because um, you can use those for your backgrounds. Pretty much, I'm doing most of the background work with with one of these um, large flat brushes. Um, most of the time I'm not doing a lot of detail work with those, so you could get away with uh, using, you know, something. So about this size, the number eight bright, is a good kind of medium um, flat brush. I like the brights because they're a little bit shorter. Um, a An angle brush, like a three eighths inch angle, is a really good basic size. You're going to want a round brush like... Um, 
maybe about an eighth inch wide or so uh, with round brush, kind of a medium width round brush. And then you'll probably want some sort of a liner brush. And with those brushes, you can pretty much do 90% of what we do in our videos. Um, then you'll probably want a, a Deerfoot stippler and a fan brush if you're gonna do foliage or trees, that kind of thing. Um, and then if you're gonna do a lot of flowers, a filbert is really helpful. So one of these like four, number four filberts, this one's about a, about a three eighths inch or so. Uh, another angle, quarter inch angle for smaller details. The angle brushes are really versatile. They can work for like a, a flat brush. You can make lines with them. You can do just about uh, anything. You can make little dots like you would with a round brush. Um, so I really like the angle brush. They're one of the most versatile brushes that you can get. So getting a couple different sizes is a good idea. So but which, you can get a, you know you can get away with doing most of stuff with just a few you know a few mm -hmm. sizes and then you can so add more as you need them. What what you found and what several other people in your group have found is that brushes do make a difference. They do. So. They make would, a huge difference. It would be, would it be better to buy one or two high quality brushes and yes. then over time get others rather than getting a whole set of lower quality yes. brushes? Yes, okay. 100% yes. And yes. then down below the video, there's a link to the brush guys and it has all of Angelo's recommended brushes. There's 5% off right. with the code Angelo Fine Art. Uh, but you can get your brushes anywhere, but there's a easy way to find the ones that Angelo uses and recommends. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I have videos on my Thankful Art group in, on Facebook that I did where I showed three different quality brushes, a really like a beginner brush, a uh, sort of medium quality brush, and then a really high quality brush and showed the difference. Same, same artist, same paint, doing the same exact brush stroke with three different brushes. And it shows that, you know, the the more, the more, the cheaper the brush, the more difficult time you're going to have of painting. So if you get a really good brush and take care of it, it's going to last you years and years, and you'll have a lot easier process of learning to paint. I find, um, like holding edges and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. If you're, yeah, yeah. Just making straight lines, any of that kind of stuff, you're just going to have a lot easier time if you have a better brush. It's just. Um, basic okay so I've mixed up a little tiny touch of purple a little touch of yellow and the yellow kind of neutralizes that purple so it creates kind of a I don't know like almost a brown it just it just sort of mattifies the color so it's not like in your face bright um, and I'm gonna grab a little bit more purple and do a darker version over here for some of the shadow areas And we're going to work on this flower here. So there's some dark areas in here in the middle. So I'm just going to kind of tap those in. Uh, let's see. This one over here has some. It's not that dark, though. So I'm just going to do it right here. So this one's kind of our dark pink. Looks like it's the only one of this kind that we have. It's sort of like a, looks like a mum almost, or a, maybe it's a peony. I don't know. You can't tell. And clean that out, grab some white, mix that in with the quinacridone magenta. I want to make a light pink color. All right, that's good. And then I'm going to just dab, really. I'm just going to dab like this, using the edge of my brush. And just kind of pulling in towards the center. So we're seeing these flower petals that are pointing straight at us. So really all we're seeing is kind of like a straight edge. If it's a longer petal, you know, you might see a line or you might just see a little dot in some parts. So these petals are kind of pointing right at us. So as they get out here, they're kind of more like straight on. We're seeing a little bit more of the side of them. But these ones that are kind of in the middle here are just kind of pointing straight up at us. So we're just going to do like that, pointing down, pulling down towards the center. So the center of the flower is going to be right in there somewhere. I'm going to grab more white and out here on the edge, I'm going to just add more white 
overlap them just a little bit. Excuse me. Okay. <coughs> okay. I'll be all right. If you didn't get it the way you want it the first time around, you can always go back in and paint that dark color over and try again. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of the dark color in here in between. You know, I want to leave a little bit of that dark color peeking through, though, so just try not to cover it all up. That one's kind of a... Mummish flower. It looks like this one over here might be the same kind. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this more of this pink here, a little bit of white. And I'm going to just pull in some petals this way, like that. This one's a little bit bigger. Kind of a bowl shape almost, like a half moon almost shape, something like that. And then I'll use some white to create some petals over the top. This is very stylized. We're not trying to Go for like super realism here. We're just kind of trying to, you know, get them to look sort of like little flower blossoms happening. There we go. This one's got. Looks like maybe a petal's coming off this way. too much about the back end of it we can kind of clean that up adding some leaves and things over the top so yeah these ones are kind of pointing that way now here these ones are more kind of a salmon color so I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and a lot of white so I'm just take some white over here with whatever color I've got on my brush here. We'll use a little bit of that right in the center to kind of fill out those peach colored flowers. So we're using all the same colors as we did last week, right? Where this is all the same colors, but we're just mixing them a little bit differently. So they have a little bit different uh, tone to them. Okay, and then up here, this one's a little bit more pink, so I'll go ahead and add a little bit more pink to my Actually, let's use the unbleached titanium too, because it's got kind of a yellow color. I'm just going to start from the center and start overlapping little tiny brush strokes. This is like our roses, only like 100 times smaller. So they're really small little brush strokes. These are, I think, another peony. They remind me a little bit of verniculus. They're very, very tight petals all stacked up. Let me clean my brush out so I don't have any of that darker color in there. Just use this white. With a teeny tiny bit of that soft pink that we mixed. And let's, there we 
There we go. Round and round, tiny little petals. Just using the edge of my brush. Really pretty. Let's do in here. Try to get very small ones. If I can use just the edge of my brush, I can get these little tiny bit bitty petals all kind of overlapping man I can't I did wait a better job with this one than I did the other one what were you saying I say I can't wait to get another side cam why just so we can see your brush strokes from the side mmm why they look better from the side? Well, you just get a good Different idea look. on how how you're touching the canvas and the right. edges stuff. Usually, that your hand sometimes will get in the way, so you can't really see oh, right. the action of the bristles. Okay, I'll try to keep it away from the edge there. Yeah. Oh, look at you all fancy like that. Curve it. color with the white and these ones are all in here kind of facing this way little tiny brush strokes all kind of overlapping not touching really leaving a little space in between them so I'm getting this kind of rounded petals Opening, grabbing a little bit more of that darker pink to do some in pink. There we go. Okay, fun. Key ones are kind of more of the magenta, just straight up quinacridone magenta. I'm just going to dab a little petals. I'm just pressing down and lifting up on the side. Thunder. Oh, I know. It's like... This goes all the way down here. Okay. Let me grab a little bit of green. A little bit of white. I still have that pink on my brush, so it's kind of softened up that green a little bit. I'm going to use it to kind of do a little bit in between these petals here. There's a little bit of green. We could have done this first, really. Just make sure there's a little bit of green, kind of anchoring those flowers. <clears throat> showing just creating and you can see how I'm kind of 
um, building these flowers. I think they're snapdragons maybe, I'm not sure. They look like they're kind of stacked up. So some are kind of looking straight on. We're seeing just the front side of it and some of them are kind of turned to the side a little bit. This is where we're getting to the kind of, this is, we're getting close to the end, but we're definitely still kind of in that ugly stage where it's looking really awkward. Like, like nothing's really connected very well. Everything's looking a little bit kind of weird. I don't know. So this is where you can start to get a little bit frustrated and think that you're doing something wrong or this is, it's not going right. And a lot of people will give up right about here. So when you get to this point, don't give up. You can just know that we're getting close to the end. I'm going to add a little bit of the dark, dark color there. That little flower needed some dark in the center. Let's do a little bit of dark right there, too. There we go. Grab a little bit of that clonacridone. Do a little bit really dark right here, too. all about contrast. Got to have a little contrast, even with these super light flowers. Grabbing some unbleached titanium here. A little bit of white. here. All right. I want to add some of our blue-green leaves, so I'm going to add a little bit of unble or, uh, ultramarine blue to my yellow green blue shade. Make it even more blue. Grab that white. Might add a little bit of the burnt umber and that'll just kind of tone it down so it's not so vivid. And then we're going to use this to kind of create those kind of sage leaves that are all over in here. fairly light to start with and then we're going to darken up some over the top here once we get these on these are all going off the side here setting my brush down and just pulling lines didn't do anything on this one, I noticed. 
Got a little bud right here. Just gonna overlap it a little bit. more white we are almost done just in a few little 30 minutes ha huh. oh no <laughs> you're so funny extra details here. On the tea. That darker green there that we mixed up. What? What were we saying? Did you use regular teal or did you mix it? I used the phthalo green blue shade, ultramarine blue, and a little touch of burnt umber. Okay. And then now I'm going to go over the top of my leaves, add shadows. And I'll add more white also, but I'm going to, this is just kind of the second stage here just kind of going over the middle part if you notice those sage leaves have kind of they look like they're outlined with white so we're doing the middle see this one you can tell a lot like that it looks like it's outlined with a lighter color so we're just kind of putting this darker color sort of in the middle of our leaves to kind of indicate that right then I can grab my white Go back in and just do some lines. A little bit of green in there, so it's not like pure white, but I can create some lines in the centers of some of these. Define them a little bit. I got too much of the dark green dark green I can kind of outline it medium dark and then this is the really light color that I'm ending with hey those mm -hmm. look like flowers good that's kind of the idea it's kind of a new subject matter for you huh um, yeah, I mean, they're all right. I like them okay. Trying it out? Yeah, they're all right. Hey, you know what? what? If, if people can't draw, what should they do? Oh, yeah, if they can't draw, you can, for a dollar a month, I've got traceables for all of my tutorials. So go to patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art there. I needed to use a cool You're fancy. logo. I see that. That you made for me. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. Um, yeah, go there. It'll tell you all about it, how to sign up to be um, part of my Patreon list. We've got a giveaway going on right now. We just so hit our goal, our monthly goal. So we're going to be 
doing a special painting in a couple of weeks and uh, it'll be public but the only ones eligible to win the painting will be the Patreon folks it's just a thank you to them those who've helped us get meet our monthly goals on Patreon and I'm adding cadmium yellow to my phthalo green um, make a bright green here yeah so fun we do giveaways polls we do all kinds of stuff with the patreon folks they have okay let's well, explain this a little bit better though one dollar a month is access to traceables right going back to february 2017 yes so all of the traceables as many downloads as you want for a dollar one dollar for yes. 30 days right then for five dollars you get the traceables plus access to a bonus video right that is done and so month yeah, mm -hmm. it's a little bit longer, much more detailed. Yes, it's yes. more of a fine art painting usually. All right, that's two to three hours sometimes, mm -hmm. so get a lot more details. Yes. Then at $10 a month, you get those plus access to another Facebook private group. Where, where I do yet another mm -hmm. bonus video. <laughs> and, and that's stretched out month. over the four weeks. Right. So you do in four installments, you have a video, you have a chat, yes. you do polls. Yeah, they get to pick a lot of the videos that we do. They get to all, you know, a lot of input on what we do on our channel comes from that that group. So, yep, it's a lot of a lot going on just besides our regular videos that we do here on a weekly basis. I'm going to do one out here. I feel like it needs a leaf right out here. kind of coming out here all right so this is where I'm going to kind of go through and just sort of clean up any you know any flowers that look like they're kind of needing help at the back end here I'm going to kind of maybe put a leaf sort of over the top of where it starts or um, maybe highlight a leaf darken it up make it overlap other leaves 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 um, I'm just kind of trying to create movement now because I feel like it's all kind of in this square so I want to open it up just a little bit so I'm going to take my uh, angle brush here I'm going to use this light green color that we mixed do a few little stems coming off think about the movement where I want to lead the eye so maybe I want to pull something out this way or I definitely want to pull some stuff out this side so this side has all of these little daisy things that are happening so that's our last little thing we need to do so I'm just going to put a bunch of little stems off of here using that edge of my liner brush or my or my angle brush whatever works best for you I like using the angle brush because I don't have to oh load it over and over again okay maybe I'll do one one just kind of hanging down here just to kind of pull it, the eye back around over here. I'm gonna do the same over here. Okay. Wipe that off, get a little bit more thicker paint this time, and I'm gonna do a few little leaves. I'm gonna dab, 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 dab. So, kind of overlapping little leafy things. I'm not going to put this one up here, it's just too big. 
I want to leave a little space up there. So I'm going to take off my chalk marks now. Any chalk marks that are still showing. Use a damp cloth. Wipe those off. Clean out my brush. I'm going to go ahead and switch to a little bit smaller brush here. This is my number quarter inch. I'm going to grab my yellow and some burnt sienna. Make it dark orangey brown. And dab in the centers for some of my daisies. These are chamomile. They're kind of those little teeny tiny daisy-like flowers. I'm just going to dab in around the outside. Maybe do a few little dabs like that. Dab, dab, dab. If you want them to be more defined, you can kind of take your time with this. I'm just going to Go around these little spots here and just dab in. They have tiny little needle like petals, almost like an aster. They have little teeny tiny petals, so you can use the edge of your brush to get kind of smaller lines going. Maybe use an angle brush or a, or a um, liner brush if you want. Not all of these are going to point, be pointing straight at us, so keep that in mind. Some of them are going to be kind of smushed flat, so you can get, do some of these a little bit more oval than others. Basically, with any kind of flower like this, when I'm doing these, I'm um, my main thing is just to remember to keep it random. You know, uh, nature is not all matchy matchy. You know, same, same, same. So if you get into that habit um, it, or you know if you do all of these exactly looking the same same you know direction that they're pointing same petals and all that kind of thing they they'll look a little bit less realistic so we just gonna wanna keep it random that one, I don't know what happened with that one percent liking those but oh well done now so I'm gonna grab some green some more green and do some green kind of below some of these white dots some of them are just gonna white dots so I want to make sure that they're kind of connected to something or look like they're connected so some of these I'm just gonna dab in a little extra Behind them, underneath them. Cute. All right, so I'm gonna pull this flower out here, this big one right here. more of that pink and white. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Rubbed off. That's weird. 
I have no idea. I think these canvases don't bond very well if you kind of mess with them too much. They just kind of rub off. I'm not happy about that. I noticed it was doing that with the other one too. I think because I wiped it with the cloth to get the paint off, I left the water on there and it just kind of soaked in and lifted it. Maybe because it's solid it doesn't dry as quickly. It's still kind of not dry. I don't know. I have no idea. Alright, I'm going to work on these leaves a little bit more. I don't like these leaves. Okay, what don't you like about them? Somebody was asking. What don't I like about them? Mm -hmm. um, the leaves? I don't know. Um, they said, what doesn't she like about them? I don't know. I think they're two, two, all two the same, same. I think that's what it is. I'm just going to... Too matchy-matchy? Too matchy-matchy. I'm just going to kind of put out some random ones here. Try to get them to look a little bit more random. Get that outline broken up. So, get some of the lighter color here. some of this pink and just put a few little pink petals in here. Grab some white. Just do some highlights over the top of some of these petals so they kind of poke out a little bit more. Not all of them, just Just a few, there we go. I'm gonna do a couple in there. Now I'm kind of looking at the colors too and just saying, you know, where am I seeing these colors? Where might I move things around to kind of balance it a little bit better? Let's see what this looks like next to our one from last week. So it's kind of fun. They're the same color, color scheme, <clears throat> but definitely different, you know? And then the next one, next week, will be more in the yellow family. So we'll have more of this yellow. In fact, speaking of yellow, I'm going to go ahead and use that yellow, cadmium yellow, and a little bit of white, and dab in the centers of our pink or our yellow flowers. A little bit of that brighter yellow. There we go. They are saying that you need shadow underneath your vase. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, good, thank you. So that was the burnt umber and the unbleached titanium color. So do I need to go Just back to the darker, palette cam? And then some water. What? Do I need to go back to palette cam? No, it's fine. Okay. I'm just going to... The shadow was going this direction, so I'll do the same thing over here. It's watered down paint, and I'm just going to use my finger just to kind of soften up that edge. There we go. Thanks, guys. Go along that 
edge there too. Go a little bit darker right along that line between the wall and the I mean if I just kind of go over with my finger it'll blend it on both sides so I kind of get a little bit of a little bit of it up here on the wall and a little bit down below. There we go. All right. Very good. Number two down. Got some super chats. Awesome. Chat still blows up with moo. Moo. When people <laughs> I like uh, it. post it in there. That's awesome. We kind of delay because uh, found that it kind of breaks up the video. So we're thinking for long term. Yeah. For people watching the videos, it'd be better to do them at the end. So yeah. the first super chat was from Evelyn. She says, thank you for answering my, our questions. Angela, mm-hmm. your art is amazing. Mark, you are funny. <laughs> Dynamic duo. Aw, thank you. And the second chat was from Carol. She says, thanks, Angela, for this series, Loving the Vases and Flowers. Oh, good. And she said nothing about me, so. <laughs> I think Evelyn's my favorite. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> thanks so much, oh, guys. We so appreciate you. Huh? You can do splatters. Oh, yes. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, wow. You forgot about splatters. Oh, I, I did. I can turn the lights off. There we go. You can tell. I'm rusty. Jazz has got I, your back. I can't remember what color we used. Do, do they remember what color we used? I think we just used the blue and the little bit of the brown, maybe. That's what it looks like. Ultramarine blue. A little bit of brown, maybe a little bit of white. That looks about right. Okay, using the fan brush, make sure you add quite a bit of water. Just dipping in and the water will help it splatter. Otherwise, it'll just stick to your brush. And boom, there we go. Yeah, that looks about right. And of course, we can always splatter this other one over here if we need to, to make a match. You know, <laughs> here we'll just tap over here just, yeah, just, just to make splatter sure everything kinda... i'm gonna duck underneath the table here real quick <laughs> make sure i don't get splatters on me yeah. <laughs> move over there dog. we go move over dog i'm coming in <laughs> oh there we go now we can see oh, them together look hey, at that. looking good fine so we'll have the third one uh, on saturday and then we'll be starting our new series of the small canvases next week we'll be doing a a ladybug on a daisy so that'll that be fun next tuesday so nice. Saturday we'll be do, doing number three on this one, and then the daisy, and then we'll be doing a portrait of a lady standing in a field next Saturday after this one coming up. So lots of fun stuff going on. If you want to see the new videos, uh, you can go after the show here, click on my name or my photograph. There it'll take you to my channel homepage, and you can see all the other upcoming live streams we've got, and also some of the older videos. Uh, they're all kind of organized by subject so you can go to the playlists list and or you can just go to videos and it'll show you all the videos that we've ever done um but uh yeah give it a thumbs up like subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hopefully and uh we'll see you next time thanks guys so much for watching thanks to the super chat folks we so appreciate you uh and we will be back next saturday so this saturday coming up all right (laughs) bye guys